Right, turn if you would this evening to uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, and um, parent-teacher fellowship, we call it PTF a lot, sometimes that's all we call it, when we stop and think about those three words, it's interesting, parent, teachers, fellowshipping together, you can't fellowship with someone that you're not in agreement with, or on the same page with, and so I like the uh, term... But a lot of schools have that, a PTF, but it's just initials to them. Hopefully it can mean the real words to us, that uh, we have parents uh, and teachers fellowshipping, or maybe we even say cooperating together for a cause, for a purpose. Uh, of course, the purpose uh, in that, uh, teachers, of course, are always learning, parents are always learning, and uh, Kids, children are always learning and growing, and they grow a lot better and get a lot more done when there is fellowship between the parents and the teachers, and not just a couple nights a year, but really as a spirit or an attitude or a mindset that uh, goes into the entire school. So we're thankful for our parent-teacher fellowship this evening. I'm going to read a few verses uh, tonight, 10 actually, and... Um, Share just a few thoughts here on the topic, 10 timeless truths for today's students. 10 timeless truths for today's students. Let's pray, and we'll go through through these. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We can gather together midweek, Lord, really around the purpose of Christian education, Lord, and uh, the blessing that uh, Fairhaven Christian Academy is uh, today, has been, and and prayerfully will be uh, going off into the future uh, Lord, we know a lot of that <clears throat> revolves around the spirit and the, and the mindset of uh, the students, us as parents, as well as the teachers that are involved. Lord, that uh, each group in their own way would be surrendered uh, in, in walking before you uh, daily and then coming together with the uh, objective of uh, instruction, teaching, correction, uh, Lord, reproof and, uh, and, and learning and growing. And I pray, Lord, that would be uh, what would uh, mark our school. Uh, Lord, and I pray you'd bless this evening the communication that will be going on uh, between parents and teachers. And we ask God that, uh, that uh, we'd be able to improve and uh, move ahead uh, in a better way as a result. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Timeless truths. So uh, um, <clears throat> times do change. Sometimes uh, it's for the better, and sometimes it's for the worse, and it really kind of sometimes depends on our opinion about what changed. Some things we're glad they changed, other things they wish they had not changed. I was blown away as a whatever, 10-year-old, when the Burger Chef went out of business. I loved Burger Chef. I mean, it had the best, they, were, they weren't Happy Meals, they were fun meals, and they were funner and happier than McDonald's Happy Meals. They actually popped up. They had games. There's actually stories. So the more you went back, it was almost like a, a kid soap opera. You could follow along all these things, and you had to go back. And it's Burger Chef. It's not Burger King. That was like adult food. Burger Chef was right up my alley, but it, it went out of business. It was gone, never to come back again. The only place you can find it now is if you like dig into the Internet, and you see that Burger Chef sign. You're like, oh, I wish I could go get the Big Chef or the Super Chef. Those were some awesome sandwiches, but they are never coming back again. Because sadly, times change. For me, that was a bad, that was a bad change. I want that one back, but it's not coming back. So I'm going to have to just, I'm just going to have to cope for the rest of my life. So I'm going to have to manage, I'm going to have to deal with the loss of Burger Chef and Shakey's. Shakey's. I came to college. I never heard Shakey's before. Got here a little bit early. Somebody said, we're going to Shakey's. What's sh- I don't want Shakey's. I'm like, sell big shakes. Well, that plus everything else. So we're off to Shakey's, and it's the buffet that won't. It probably was junk, but at the time, it was awesome because it was all you can eat. It's 30 years past the facts, so I can share this personal illustration about Shakey's. I maybe already did. 
I packed a, ba a sack lunch every Saturday, every day, sack lunch. Bus visit with Mr. Wright and his 1989 Pontiac Forenza or something. That brown little car, it's pretty quick. It was nice. Nice little brown car. We went to Gary. Every once in a while, we might stop at rallies and get the strawberry banana milkshake. Rallies on Broadway. <clears throat> it was an act of faith to stop at that rallies. But we did it. We toughed it out because we had purpose in life. Except this one Saturday, it was... Late April, early May, I think it was in the spring push. Mr. Wright never did this. Hey, you want some lunch? You want me to spring for lunch today? I'm like, sack lunch, Mr. Wright lunch. Can't be any, anyway, yes, I'm thankful for this sack lunch. I am grateful for it, but I will be glad to go wherever you want to go. We went south on Broadway into Maryville to Shakey's. Perfectly timed, <laughs> perfectly timed stop at Shakey's. We took our time there. We got our money's worth that day. As we watched the Bulls beat the Pistons for the first time to make it to the NBA Finals at Shakey's in our extended spring push, nonetheless, lunch that day. Man, it was, that was a huge screen. You couldn't hardly see anything because, you know, the screens back then were sort of not so hot. But we figured out what was happening as the Pistons walked off with their heads down. And after, I don't know, three, four hours, we finally said adios to Shakey's and and we did finish every stop we needed to that day. And then, no more shakies in Michigan City, no more shakies in America. They're all gone. Bad change. And then you might remember this, too. There's actually some notes here that I'm going to get to. But you might remember growing up as a kid how you, you, know, how you got stronger and how you stayed healthy was by eating uh, sugar-filled vitamins named after Flintstone characters. And you're, this is supposed to make you strong and healthy and, you know, like, man, we've got a big soccer game. Give me two Wilmas and, and, and a Dino, too, because give, give me all three of them. I'm going to, this is a big day for me. I got a big test. Give me Barney. Big test. He's pretty, he's short, but he's pretty smart. And uh, so that's supposed to make us, Flintstone vitamins, I yeah, probably a good thing. Maybe if they're still in the market, I'm sorry, but I've far, I haven't eaten any in a while. That's why I need to get back to that or something. Got a big game tomorrow, basketball team. Let's grab some Flintstone. Um, probably, well, that's better than what our, I guess our grandparents and their grandparents were stuck with cod liver oil. Right? That could, that could be worse. That, that cured my family of so many ills. These kids are like, oh, I'm not feeling real good, Mom, and just stay home. Oh, Jennifer's like, okay, well, you know what? Your mom and Papa did cod liver oil. Come on over. You got two spoonfuls because you got to eat this. If you're going to stay home, you got to have the cod liver oil a couple times a day. I think they had it one time. Perfect attendance after that at school. <laughs> They're like, I'm feeling pretty good right now after a day of <clears throat> having that come on up a few times through the day. And suddenly they felt better. Well, I'm glad that's not what we normally take now. We've... You know, progressed a little bit. That was a change that might not be too bad. Okay, if you're still taking cod liver oil, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> Don't mean to offend you there. But people are kind of mad right now, like that's what keeps me healthy right now. Anyway, so things change. Something's never changed though. So, so there are timeless truths, and it, it does us good to separate in our mind what is changeable and what's changed for the better and things that are timeless. And so I'd just like to share quickly 10 timeless truths for us, in particular for the students that are in here, whether in, in, in academy or in the college. These are timeless truths. These are things that I kind of just thought through that I heard uh, reinforced from a teacher when I was uh, going through uh, Christian school, uh, <clears throat> through college, uh, through a parent, uh, maybe through a coach, through a teacher, a Sunday school teacher. All of these are truths that I heard and I believe are still applicable today because they are based on Scripture. And so it's nice to have some things to hold on to that you know are never going to change. When shaky's gone, these truths will still be here. Okay, And so it's nice. It's, it's a resting place. It's a security spot for us. Uh, when, when we're going through today's change in, in society and culture, and even in churches. So some timeless truths. Number one is found here based on Proverbs 4.23, and that's this. Your spirit, not the circumstances, 
always rules your day. I'll say that again. Your spirit, not your circumstances, always rules your day. Proverbs 4.23 uh, gives us this admonition. Keep thy heart, it's your soul, your spirit, your, your attitude, uh, with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, or out of it flow the things of life, the day-to-day -day events of life are going to come out of your heart. So, yeah, we're put in all kinds of different circumstances, understandably. Some are going to be great, some are going to be mm, nothing, they're going to mean a lot, and others are going to be bad. But what rules that day, despite all those, what rules the day? It's our spirit, it's our heart. That's where the issues of life come from, our our outlook. So let's understand that our, we are not in charge of their circumstances, but we are in charge of our reaction to circumstances. We're in charge of our spirit. That's one thing that's never going to change. And so keep that in mind as we go uh, day by day. Your spirit, student, is not the circumstances, is what is going to rule your day and, by extension, your year and ultimately your life. Number two, put off sin and put on godliness every single day. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Put off sin and put on godliness every single day. The Bible gives us this uh, simple command uh, commands in these verses that you put off concerning the former conversation. That's our words and our actions. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And, and this needs to happen each day. We can't afford to go a few days without putting off sin and putting on godliness. We need to do that every day. And so... How do we do that? Well, we make it a part of our day. And what's the best way to do that? To make it a part of the first thing we do each day as a habit that just becomes a part of our life. If it's that important, then it moves up to the prominent part or the priority part of our life, the priority part of our day. And that is put off sin, confess our sins, and put on godliness, saturate our mind and our heart with the Bible, begin that morning communicating with God, and then we walk through that day uh, in, the, in the light of the Holy Spirit. Put off sin, put on godliness every single day. Number three is a statement that was above uh, our, the top of our classroom for all the years that I went to school, and that's this. To do less then your best is sin. To do less than your best is sin. And I remember sitting in school and looking up and seeing that day after day after day. And frankly, there's some times where I didn't want to do my best. There's times I didn't do my best. But those words kept looking right back at me. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. And the Bible gives us, in this uh, verse, gives us some other verses that deal with this too, but it gives us in this verse this comprehensive word, or this word that includes everything, and that's the word whatsoever. So here's the verse, Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. To do less than your best is sin. We know that Jesus Christ gave his best for us. We know that God gave his best to us when he gave his son for us. And so our response back to that must be our best. To do less than that is sin. And I will also follow up and say this. Just because you did your best this time doesn't mean that the next time can't be even better. And it does us well to be around people that will help us remember that. It does good to be around a teacher who will say something like, hey, this was good, but I know you can do a little better. 
And this was average, but you're not an average student. I think there's more inside of you. It does good to be around a, 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 a music teacher uh, that, uh, that has that outlook. It does good to be a parent that can tell our children that and help them to understand that. Yes, that's good. Good job. What about, what about this? Here's how we can make that even better. And that spirit of going through life of saying, that's great. It's good. I'm glad for what's been done, but let's not rest on that. Let's see if we can't take another step. Let's see if we can't move ahead. Let's see if we can't press toward that mark uh, for something that's, that's even uh, better. A coach may do that. A, a teacher may do that. And, and really, a, a, a good-hearted, serious-minded fellow student might do that for you, too. That's good people to hang around, to be influenced by. Number four, whatever you would like to be done to you, do that same thing to other people. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Whatever you would like to be done to you, do that same to other people. This truth works in, parent, in, in school, okay, among peers. This works from children's, children to parent. This, this works in marriages, Okay, this works in families. This really works in just about any relationship that we can come up with. The Bible says, Jesus says this as part of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, all things, again, whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So if you're not sure what to do in a certain situation, ask yourself, what would you like someone to do for you if that was you in that situation? And then simply do that. It's a very simple truth, but it answers a lot of questions and gives us a lot of direction uh, for what to do and how to live, how to think uh, in, in our lives. It's the golden rule. And probably all of us have heard that many, many times. But it's kind of a matter of applying it in our life and being reminded about that. Number five, your direction determines your destination. Again, something that we've heard many times, but I'm not going to turn to a passage here. I'm just going to ask you that we're at church on Sunday night to remember the truth that we all learned from the life of Lot. His small direction determined a very sad Direction, uh, destination in his life. It was just small choices. It was a little habit. It was a little influence. So as students, this is a timeless truth. A small change in your direction is going to give you an ending point, a destination that's way further away from where you started at. You might think of geometry class and making your angles at the very bottom, the lines are close together as they start to separate. But the further off that it goes, the bigger the gap uh, becomes. I didn't use one geometrical term in there, so I apologize if I offended the math purists in there. There's words for that that I never learned because I, I did do my best in geometry, but I just didn't do very good. <clears throat> Hopefully, anyway, um, that will be rectified later, I'm sure, in the millennium. I'll be in charge of building protractors or something. I don't know. So your direction determines your destination. Little habits, little influences, little steps, little trespasses, little sidesteps, little exits off the right path. Going to give you a destination that's not what you're thinking right now. A lot learned that. Number six, turn if you would to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. Number six. This timeless truth for today is this. It's by the grace of God that we are what we are. It's by the grace of God that we are what we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. Here Paul said this, <clears throat> But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. That, that would be a wonderful thing to say at the end of our life, wouldn't it? 
God's grace that he bestowed on us wasn't in vain. We get to all ask ourselves that question now. Is God's grace that's been given to me, has it been in vain? Or have I squandered it? Have I wasted it? Have I not uh, made full use of the mercy and the grace of God in my life? Paul says, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I remember many times, and you would have the similar situations where you saw something as a kid, and you thought, wow, that could be me. I remember going to a little basketball tournament that our school went to. There's, there was a number of schools there, and uh, we're at breakfast that morning, and this uh, boy is over there eating. He's got a baseball cap on. He's got kind of a coat pulled up, or, or, or kind of high, and... <clears throat> and um, I looked a little close, and I couldn't see. He's a little further away, but it's, I, I saw something looked strange about him. And then uh, comes time to play basketball, and out there, he's out there warming up, and his entire face, he, and surely he had been in a, in a horrible fire. His entire skin was completely melted. He had the hat on because his hair was all burned off and scabbed over. And, and I thought, that could be me could be any of us. By the grace of God, I am what I, we are, whatever it is, whether it's physical, mental, whatever it is, it's only God's grace. And then I remember the time getting the phone call as a four-year-old uh, a kid and still remember my mom answering the phone and bawling and a cousin the same age as me had just died in a house fire, four years old. And I thought, that could be me. And then I remember the times that, uh, my dad would take me out, and we'd go uh, visitation, knocking on doors. We'd come across a house that was mm, rough, and seeing these kids, and I thought, well, that, that could be me. By the grace of God, the Bible says we are what we are, and that does us good as students to remember that when we come across someone that's poorer or less fortunate, okay, or... Um, a shepherd or somebody that's younger or uh, somebody that, uh, you know, <clears throat> doesn't dress quite as nice. It does us good to remember that. It's by the grace of God we are what we are. That's a timeless truth. And if we think about that, that'll, that'll do a good number on knocking our pride down when we remember it's God's grace. Whatever we think we are, whatever... We don't have anything to be proud about, but if we start to get proud about something, we stop and think, it's by the grace of God. And uh, that'll give us a heart of compassion for those that especially don't know the Lord. And uh, it'll, it'll keep our eyes and vision about eternity uh, right. Remember one time uh, my dad explained that it was near Christmas time and they knew a family down the street that didn't have anything. And so his mom came in and said, I want you and your brother to go pick your favorite toy. And they went and picked their favorite toy. And she said, I want you to walk down the street and you're going to give it to those boys down the street. And that was a little thing. Uh, and he only did it one time, as far as I know. But that stuck in his mind. So every time he went by that house, yeah, he didn't have that toy anymore, but he realized how much he had compared to that particular house. Now we stop and think, if you're in here and you uh, have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior personally, then how much more do you have? How much more do we have? Uh, it's by God's grace. And uh, so that will keep us uh, humble and with a good outlook and attitude toward others as we go throughout our day. By the grace of God, we are what we are. A couple more here. Number seven is in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, and that's this truth. Throughout all eras and in every situation, we will reap what we sow. This is timeless. This was the case in 1000 BC. This was the case uh, during the time of Christ. This was the case uh, 100 years ago. This is the case today. Throughout all eras and in every situation, we will reap what we sow. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, I'm sorry, verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We are going to reap what we sow. God's timeless truth. 
Number eight, friendship with the world is always, always has been, always will be, enmity with God. Let's look at James chapter 4 and verse 4. Friendship with the world always has been and always will be enmity with God. James 4.4, 4. the Bible says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So as a ninth grader, I see the two guys come in with the brand new Sony Walkman. Yes, indeed. This made music portable 30 years ago. It, on your side, you, had, you didn't have to sit at home and put the record on. You could take this with you. It was a portable cassette player with some sweet headphones right there and the AA batteries that ran out pretty quickly. So you had to get the Energizer Bunny ones because they kept on going. They told us. They told us. Um, <clears throat> so in comes the Walkman, and the cassette tape was the hot, hottest, coolest, filthy-mouthed comedian of the day that was in the Sony Walkman on a cassette. And that was the world that came in the duffel bag into our school for, I don't know, for a little bit. Because there it was, and during recess, the two guys would go, and there, there the headphones would come on, and the cassette would get passed around. That comedian, well, I don't know if he's still alive, but if he is, he's probably not very funny anymore. The Walkman has went the way of Fred and Wilma and their vitamins. And the cassette tape, it was a nice funeral service we had for it. We buried it in a very small box and had a nice service, and it will be no more. Now, for those of you that are still pushing in the cassettes, I'm sorry, but in general, the cassettes, you're a couple, you're a couple things back. You know, the CD passed that up, and, and now we got everything digital. So the comedian, he's gone. The Walkman, pff, that ain't cool anymore. And the cassette tape, that really isn't cool. At the time, that was the cutting edge world looking to get inside the hearts of our school. So, the devil's not dumb. He's got another thing that appeals to people today that they're going to laugh at. And he's not using the, the Walkman anymore. He's put the Walkman and the cassette all together into, into a digital device of some sort. But it's the world. 30 years from now, somebody's going to be standing up here and say, Back in the day, there was so-and-so. And in the 30 years from now, people are going to say, What? That's so stupid. Who, who, was, who, who did that appeal to? we got a smart enemy that we're dealing with. So, yes... The person is different, the musicians are different, the comedians are different, the vehicle that's brought to us is different, but what's not different is this. Friendship with the world is enmity with God, and whoever is going to be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's timeless. And you know what hasn't happened? The world hasn't gone away. So it's still there. So we better, as we heard again, preach Sunday night, find out where that is, what that is, how it's coming, how it's going to try to get us, and what is out there that's trying to make me an enemy of God and make that my enemy, not God. Number nine, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. There's two more here. 1 Corinthians 1, 11 through 13. And that's this, I believe, timeless truth. Being a part of a clique, us four no more group of friends, is no way to live out your school years. It's just no way to live out your school years, being a part of a, a clique. Look at what uh, 
the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians 1.11. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? So this church of grown-ups was acting like kids because they were getting into their little groups. So I think this is where parents, we can help. We can insist that our kids not fall into or, I guess, settle into this small little group of friends. We've got to insist on that. We've got to insist on friendliness and insist on uh, uh, doing things the way Christ did them. And he just didn't do that. He didn't live this way. He didn't, he didn't teach us this way. And his example was this, not this way. And by getting out of a little clique, we open up a whole new world for our kids. A whole new outlook. A whole new uh, balanced way of living. And not just getting together in this little group and no one else. And A, Christ didn't command that way to Christ did not give us an example that way. And three, you're limiting your opportunities and your outlook And um, if you do that. So we must insist on no, no clicks, just like Paul did here in this church. Number 10, lastly, is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And that's this truth. A little thoughtfulness goes a long way, especially to someone that is discouraged. Just a little thoughtfulness goes a long way, especially to someone that is discouraged. Look here at 1 Peter 3, verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing. Knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. And uh, the Bible goes on there. But uh, be pitiful, be courteous, spread a blessing. And that actually comes in the form of a command here to us. And it just takes a little bit, just a little thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness is like blue cheese. It only takes a little bit, and everything is covered in that. I do one day want to confront the guy that created blue cheese and ask him where he, how he was raised so irresponsibly as to produce something like that and pawn it off on the unsuspecting public as something worth eating. I mean, he obviously left the cheese in the cauldron that he was stirring and fell asleep or something till it spoiled and burned. And, and then he, to cover himself, says, I'm putting this in, in a jar and selling it for people to put on their salad. I don't get it. And if you just get a little bit of it, happened to be with closely related, extremely closely related for, for 24 years with a young lady who loves it. And every once in a while, here, you want a bite of my salad? Unsuspecting me, innocent me, naive me. Sure, I'm eating healthy. Yeah, Give me a bite of that salad and a little blue cheese goes a long way. (laughs) And I get the, (laughs) oh, I'm sorry. I'll just have to finish this myself. As I say, fine, I'm getting another cheeseburger. No blue cheese, by the way, on that. A little thoughtfulness spread, spreads kind of like that, only in a positive way. A lot of people are discouraged. They really are. There's a lot of cares of this world that people bear day by day. And sometimes cares creep up on people within a day. And so it really doesn't take much to, to make a big difference. It's just some thoughtfulness throughout the day. The Bible says be pitiful and be courteous. So these are some timeless truths for, for, uh, for uh, students, uh, <clears throat> of course, for teachers and parents. But in the midst of our school, if our school is marked by courteousness, 
Just think of how the spirit would be. And, and pity and understanding of those less fortunate and, 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 and striving to be the best and, and uh, keeping our spirits right, putting off sin carefully every day and, and putting on godliness and, and uh, realizing it's God's grace. Um, it's God's grace for whatever we are, and we are going to reap what we sow. And not being a part of a clique, but being friendly and helpful to all and and, and looking for ways to make a difference in other people's lives.